What's going on guys? Welcome to this week's meal prep. It's going to be a keto meal prep. I've gotten a lot of comments about doing a keto meal prep. I've also worked with many people who have done a keto meal prep and just had great success with it. So if you're interested in following a keto meal prep, I highly recommend this video, not just because it's my video, but because I create, I think, some of the best meal prep videos on YouTube. You can dispute me if you like, but I think they're pretty good. For this meal prep, I'm also doing the hard copies like I have done for a few other videos where it's a printout, it's got all the groceries, the cooking utensils, the cooking instructions, the macro breakdown, when to eat the meals. So it will cost just a few dollars, but these meal preps, when I do that printout and all that type of stuff, I think it really helps. I mean, I like the printout, um, you know, so when I go to the grocery store, I can just mark stuff off the list. Um, it's just easier, but yeah, it just, these take so much longer. Um, I do have to charge kind of for it, but all the instructions and all that type of stuff, you know, you could just watch this video and you could do it. But again, if you want the hard copy and you want to support me doing more of these videos, which it really helps and I really appreciate it, um, see the link in the description and I really appreciate it. But enough with that. Let's get into this meal prep. I'm going to start with the groceries. We're going to get into the prep and we will wrap it up with packaging the meals. Check it out. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, this meal prep is gonna be slightly different than all my other meal preps because of your guys' wonderful comments and feedback. I think I've got something you're really gonna like. There's actually gonna be two variations of the meal plan you could follow. One of the meal plans is gonna be around 22 to 2300 calories, and that's what you're gonna see in this video. And the other meal plan is going to be about 1600 to 1700 calories. The groceries, the cooking instructions, all of that are essentially the same for both plans, except when, you, when it comes to weighing out the food, the measurements will vary slightly. And don't worry, when it comes to weighing out the food, I will put indicators on the screen so you know exactly how much to put in each container or weigh out for each item to follow the plan that you would like. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start cooking. So I'm gonna fill the sink up with cool water, just enough to cover the salmon so I can thaw them out because they are frozen, they need to thaw. And this should only take about an hour or two. So while those are thawing, I'm gonna start prepping the vegetables. So I got my cutting board here. I'm gonna start rinsing and then dicing up some of the vegetables that are gonna be in this meal plan. And if you would like to choose or pick other vegetables, you're more than welcome to do so. Same with like spices and things like that throughout this meal prep. I generally like to keep it simple with a lot of my recipes, especially when making items in bulk or making food in bulk, because if I add a certain spice or a certain marinade, you're gonna be eating the same meal with the same flavoring, with the same seasoning on it, every day throughout the week. Whereas if you just use very simple seasonings, uh, we know salt, a little pepper, uh, maybe something else you would like, something simple. Then when it comes time to eat the meal or reheat the meal, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but you can then add additional uh, spices, sauces, marinades, which com can completely change the meal. So just keep that in mind when you, when you make these types of meals and you notice why I'm making them so simple. It's because later I can change up the meal's flavoring, which then gives me a little bit more variety. Just wanted to share that little tip. But anyways, now I'm actually cutting up a red onion. And this red onion is gonna be used in the taco salad. And I'm really just trying to dice this up into smaller bite-sized pieces. And then I'm going to move on to the next vegetable. This cutting board is really nice because it has these little like pull-out compartments. So I can just cut it, swipe it into that little pull-out compartment, change the compartment up, and keep it moving. I'll put a link to this cutting board in the description as well as there'll be a link of you know all the cooking utensils again and stuff like that in the hard copy that you can get. But I moved on to the asparagus, just cut the tips off of it, and again, swip, swap. I don't know the right sound effect, but yeah, I'm just swapping out the compartments again real quick, moving on to the next vegetable. We got some tomatoes here, and I think what I'm gonna do is shut this voiceover down for right now while I cut these vegetables up because that's all I'm doing is cutting the vegetables up. You guys can see it, and plus, I'll probably just start to ramble while I cut these up and nobody wants to listen to that. So yeah, just check out these uh, vegetables being cut up, how I'm kind of doing it. And I will be back once they're all cut up.
And I'm back, just as I'm finishing up the broccoli. So after the broccoli, I'm moving on to the spinach here, and I'm gonna rinse it. And then what I'm gonna want to do is let the spinach dry out. So I'm gonna get some paper towels, lay them out, kind of separate them a little bit. What I wanna do is let them dry out. So that's why I have the paper towels and I'm kind of spreading them around, is I wanna give these time to dry out before I start to cook with them. And we're not just gonna stand around and watch them dry out like watching paint dry. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna move on. So I'm moving on to the bacon. So I have these foil baking sheets. So you could just use a regular cooking sheet if you would like as well. Um, and you just wanna separate the baking onto the baking sheets, preheat the oven to 375 degrees. Once it's at 375 degrees, bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes for some crispy bacon. I like that crispy bacon. I don't want no soggy bacon. Don't bring, don't bring no soggy bacon around here. You wanna crisp it up. If you want it soggier, you can cook a little less, but 20 to 25 minutes will get you that delicious bacon right there. And then I'm gonna move on to just getting the broccoli and I'm gonna get some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna get some salt, I'm gonna get some pepper. And since the oven is already preheated to 375 degrees, I can then just pop these right in the oven. So a lot of times when I prep, I kind of do it in a certain way that I can um, maximize my time. I guess, or get the most done in the least amount of time. So the asparagus is gonna cook for the same amount of time as the broccoli. So I'm gonna put this in the oven the same time I put the broccoli in the oven. So again, extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. And yes, I am counting the salt and pepper into all of my, or not salt and pepper, the extra virgin olive oil into all the macros. And those are gonna bake for about 14 to 18 minutes. And then I'm gonna move on to the ground beef. I got a little bit fattier ground beef, 85-15, because again, it is keto, so fat is important. You wanna stay in ketosis, so we didn't need to get that lean beef. Um, we can use this fattier beef, which is, uh, it was organic, it's gonna taste pretty good. And for seasoning, I decided to go with this Weber Chicago steak seasoning. I think it tastes really good with the taco salad, so that's why I decided to go with it instead of just using basic salt and pepper. But that's gonna cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. And you just wanna make sure there's no pink on the, you know, pink in any of the pieces when you're when it's done. And then I'm gonna strain it, but instead of straining it right down the drain, I'm gonna strain it into that little bowl because you don't wanna pour grease right down the drain. And now I'm gonna move on to the steaks. So I'm gonna use some butter for the steaks, this pure Irish butter. You could get a different kind of butter if you'd like, but I really like this butter. I think it has a good flavor to it and pretty simple ingredients in the butter. And I'm just gonna sear it with uh, some salt, some pepper, and it's only gonna cook for about two to three minutes per side. And as this cooks, I'm going to uh, get a cookie sheet right there and I'm just gonna put some tin foil on it. Um, I use tin foil and sometimes I use like foil roaster pans. It just helps speed up cleanup time. Um, I don't have to clean up as much stuff then. Uh, don't have to wash as many dishes, which is always good. But yeah, after about two to three minutes, I'm gonna have a nice little sear on this side and then I'm gonna let the other side cook for a minute or two minutes or you know, two to three minutes and then I'm gonna take them off and I'm going to actually then throw them into the oven. I love to kind of sear them on the stove and then bake them in the oven and I'm just gonna throw them in at 375 degrees and just cook them for about five to, to 10 minutes. It depends on how thick the steak is as well as what you uh, would like it, how you'd like it done. All right, and then I'm gonna move on to the salmon. Now there are many other salmon options that you could have picked and I probably should have went with and would have probably been healthier. These are not the healthiest just because of, look at all that sauce in there. Now, I do not use all that sauce when I when I bake these, so I'm gonna have to adjust the macros a little bit because I'm not using all that sauce, so I can't count all that sauce into the macros. You will be able to see the adjusted macros in the plan, and I'm gonna bake these at 415 degrees for 12 to 14 minutes. And then what you're gonna wanna do is take the skin off. So I'm just dragging a fork kind of right in between the skin and the piece of salmon. And then just 
again, just kind of getting the skin off. I don't eat the skin of it. I've known people to eat the skin, but I don't. I don't think it tastes very good. I guess you could if you would like. And then I'm gonna take some uh, butter and I'm gonna put it into a pan, get it hot. I'm also gonna take some extra virgin olive oil and put it in a different skillet. So one skillet has butter, the other skillet has some extra virgin olive oil. And I'm gonna saute the mushrooms and then I'm gonna saute the spinach. And I'm cooking both the mushrooms and the spinach at a medium high heat. So the skillet's at a medium high heat. I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper to both. and. Just take a look at that spinach, look at how much spinach in there, because it will shrink down a lot. Um, so you'll have a full bag of spinach and it's gonna shrink down um, quite a bit once it's done. Uh, the spinach is only gonna take about three to four minutes to cook down at a medium high heat. And then the mushrooms will take more like seven to eight minutes. And then I'm gonna set the spinach aside and repeat the process. So I just added more extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna cook the rest of the spinach you know, add the salt, pepper, all that good stuff. Um, and then once the mushrooms are done, the same thing, you're gonna set them aside. And then I'm moving on to the egg. So the breakfast is gonna have eggs. So I'm taking four eggs, I'm gonna crack them in a bowl, I'm gonna whisk them up, I'm making some scrambled eggs, and I'm taking, um, I took some butter and I put it into the skillet, and I got this nice and hot, medium high heat, and I'm just gonna cook these eggs, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and it's only gonna take about four to five minutes. And this is actually two servings. So for breakfast, uh, each breakfast meal is gonna have um, two eggs. And here in just a second, I'm gonna explain more what I'm talking about because that's all the cooking we need to do. The cooking is done. Now we need to package up the food. And as I promised at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna put the measurements for each meal plan on the screen as to how much you need to weigh out. Um, certain items will be the same, so just keep that in mind, but hope that helps. And with the eggs, I'm actually only weighing out two days worth or making two um, meals of the breakfast because I don't like making eggs for more than a couple days. So that's the only reason I did it this way. But at the end of the video, I actually show that I have two more containers that just have two eggs in it and have the rest of uh, the food items. And again, in the hard copy meal plans, I lay out all of this, you know, and I kind of explain certain things as to why I did it the way that I did it. So if you want that hard copy download and you wanna show me some love and you wanna just support this channel, support me doing more of these videos, I would appreciate it. Check out the link. And now let me get back to more of the voiceover of the actual prep. So with this cheese, this is gonna be a difference in each plan. So one of the meal plans is getting a fourth of a cup and the other plan is gonna get half of that. So an eighth of a cup. Again, that's indicated on the screen, but I just wanted to make that clear. So same thing with this taco salad. The taco salad for this 2300 calorie plan is gonna get about 3.5 to four ounces of the beef. And for the lower calorie plan, it's gonna get about 2.5 eight to three ounces of the beef. The rest of the vegetables stay the same though. So the tomato is gonna be the same, the avocado, the lettuce, the red onion, and that's gonna be the same. And as I'm doing this, let me take some time to kind of uh, go through a couple other things. So how I kind of weigh the food out and calculate macros. So I use my fitness pile to calculate the macros and I almost always weigh my food cooked versus raw. So the cooked weight of food versus the raw weight is gonna vary a little bit on the you know serving size. So I use cooked weights in my fitness pal to factor the macros as well as the calories. Um, it would be the best practice, I suppose, to do everything raw, but that means you'd have to divide out each piece of ground beef into four ounces and then cook it on its own. Um, same with everything else. So that can become very tedious, but you can always use you know, my fitness pile and try to use cooked weights. You do have to sometimes verify that the food is accurate because anybody with an account can log in there and create food items and share it with the public. So they could really screw you over and screw your macros up by just adding in random incorrect food items. Another cool thing about MyFitnessPal is it'll actually let you scan in the food item. So on each item of food, right, you have uh, the barcode and you can use your phone to scan that barcode and MyFitnessPal will pull up the item closest to it. Uh, so then you can also verify the macros that way. Um, and if you want to follow me on my fitness pile, you can do that at water jug fitness. And I believe when you do that, it'll actually show you like what I'm eating and stuff, but enough of that back to the plan. 
Um, and the cheese is something that's going to vary for each plan um, right here, right? So one's getting a fourth of a cup, the other's getting an eighth of a cup. And then I'm just using that lime over the avocado because that helps keep the avocado fresh. And uh, for the salmon meal, I'm doing 3.5 ounces of the salmon for one of the meals and the other lower calorie one would be getting the uh, about three ounces of salmon. And then for the asparagus, I'm going with about eight to 10 um, stalks of asparagus. And then I'm gonna weigh out about 3.8 to four ounces of the steak. This meal is also gonna have half a cup of broccoli. And when it comes to the extra virgin olive oil that I use for cooking, as well as the butter used for cooking, those are also gonna be factored into the day's total of macros that you're gonna find in the plan. So those are factored in and you'll get, you'll see them. And now moving on to the snacks. So this is a full day. We're doing, a, we're making all the stuff for the entire day. So I need to rinse the vegetable or vegetables, rinse the fruit that I got. And I'm just gonna rinse it off and we'll put them in bowls. You could go with different fruit if you would like. I just went with berries because they're typically lower in carbs and they have some fiber. Now, blueberries are a bit higher in the carbs. So you could go with a different fruit there. Maybe just go with blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries, but not a huge deal. And I hope the on-screen uh, you know, guide or you know, kind of measurements as to what should be going in each container or being weighed out depending on the plan that you're following is making sense. Um, I tried to be as clear as possible because sometimes I don't talk about each thing being weighed out. But anyways, along with fruit, another one of the snacks is going to be 32 grams or two tablespoons of peanut butter and then um, 28 grams or 28 almonds. And I got these lightly salted almonds and that's basically it. Now there were a couple items not shown, like a cheese stick, some almond milk that also go into like the snacks, um, MCT oil, which is really helpful for following a keto meal prep is taking uh, MCT oil, and then a protein shake. So I still like to have a protein shake after a workout to refuel, so I have that as well. That is gonna all be, be laid out day by day, meal by meal uh, in that hard copy meal plan in the description, but you'll also see it here in just a few seconds. But that's really going to wrap up this meal plan. I really hope you guys find it helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave comments, feedbacks. If you'd like to show me a little more love, a little more support, check out that link in the description. Get yourself a copy of the meal plan. I really appreciate it. But until next time, keep chasing those goals and I'm out.